Welcome to Shape Your Life, the show that keeps you in touch with health-related matters. I'm Ronald Avergy. In today's show, we'll be focusing on sports nutrition and injuries for those new resolutions and learners who'll be participating in school sports. Here's what we have in store for you. In our show today, possible cure for drug-resistant TB. Nutrition diet tips for the active and the effects of quick-fix solutions on injuries. We'll also be looking at how a good warm-up can prevent those niggling injuries. For now though, here's your health news. A type of onion is believed to have the ability to fight against antibiotic-resistant TB. Researchers from the University of London and the University College London believe that a Persian shallot could increase the effects of existing antibiotic treatment in tuberculosis. Drug-resistant TB affected 490,000 people in 2016 and scientists believe that this could be the solution. This type of onion, which is a staple food in Iranian cooking, managed to reduce the bacteria in the multi-drug-resistant TB, where one of the candidates inhibited the growth of isolated TB cells by 99.9%. More research has since been initiated with clinical tests expected to start soon. In China, two monkeys have been cloned using the dolly sheep cloning method. Dolly was a female domestic sheep and the first mammal cloned from an adult somatic cell using the process of nuclear transfer. Identical long-tailed macaque monkeys were born several weeks ago named Zong Zong and Hua Hua. Scientists from the Shang Sun of the Chinese Academy of Sciences Institute of Neuroscience believe the cloned monkeys are a step closer towards human cloning and they are a useful model for studying diseases with a genetic basis, including cancer and immune disorders. When it comes to active people in sports, Finding the balance to eating healthy and exercising is not easy. We sat down with dietitian Tony Henderson to chat about the relationship between food and sports. Tony, thank you so much for joining us in the studio. Thank you for having me here, Ron. When people think of sports injuries, they don't associate what you eat and how quickly you recover. They rather focus on the physicality of the injury rehabilitation. However, is there a link between what you eat and how quickly you recover? Ron, there is a link between what you eat and how quickly you recover. Uh, when you have an injury, it's usually a muscle or tendon injury. And for the recovery to happen, you need important ingredients such as protein. So protein helps your muscles to repair because um, your muscles are made up of protein, and also immune bodies that help for inflammation and the building blocks of the muscle uh, comes from proteins. So you need to make sure you're getting sufficient protein in the form of um, lean meats, so chicken and fish, uh, and also your dairy and eggs. Um, and then also vitamin C is a very important ingredient because vitamin C helps with the collagen production and collagen production um, helps to keep your muscles strong and supple and help that uh, injury to recover quickly. So your good food sources of vitamin C are things like your citrus fruits, so your oranges, your lemons, your nachis, your grapefruit. Also strawberries are very high in vitamin C and guavas as well as all your peppers. So your red, yellow, green peppers as well as chilies. So you need when a good combination. It, but when it comes to the, the proportion, or the portion size rather, of eating your proteins and your vitamin C compared to not having an injury and having an injury, is there a difference between how much of it you, sh you should be eating? So maybe when you have an injury to increase your protein slightly. So say if you're normally having a 120 gram portion of meat or chicken, increase it to about 150 grams to 180. Um, and make sure you're having a, a source of, good source of vitamin C at least once a day. So at breakfast, lunch or dinner. Um, if, you aren't, if you don't have an injury and you're not training super hard, you can keep a smaller pro protein serving um, and possibly 
not have the vitamin C every single meal or every day. Just make sure you are having it a few days a week. If you are prone to injuries though, I do recommend that you are making sure you are having a good source of vitamin C when you are training hard, just to help prevent an injury from happening. But what about those people that believe in pills, powders and potions? I'm talking about supplements and, and vitamins. So they'd rather go to have a protein shake and vitamin C that's a chewable yes. than going to grab an orange or to actually eat a piece of chicken. Okay, so when it comes to your pills, potions and powders, uh, we must remember that food works as a whole. So if you're having an orange, it's not just the vitamin C in there that's important. There are other things within the food that helps with absorption and utilization of the supplement. Um, if you're looking at protein powders, Again, a protein powder is an isolated part of the protein. You're not getting the other benefits of the nutrients that come in the food as a whole. So the only time we're looking at doing your pills and potions and powders is when you physically cannot eat those foods or eat that amount of protein. So if you are an elite athlete, for instance, and you need to be eating a lot, we can look at powders and other supplements um, or if you have um, other medical issues so if you have severe IBS and you can't tolerate certain foods especially the foods high in vitamin C then we can look at doing supplements but food is always the best source first what about when people are on medication they're often on anti-inflammatories and pain mm. medication because you know the injury is sore and potentially after a physio appointment it's painful. it's painful what do they need to do to mitigate any other concerns from a food perspective so when you're on other medications and that so if they're short-term medications the the foods aren't usually a huge concern um but you do need to make sure that you are still eating well um, and if you have an injury for the inflammation, getting plenty of fruits and vegetables which are high in antioxidants can really help that inflammation to come down quicker, yeah. as well as making sure you are taking an omega-3 supplement or eating fish at least three times a week. Because your omega-3 really helps with the, that, the inflammation and will help everything to get into check a lot quicker. What about young teenagers who are, you know, they playing sports at school and they get injured? Should they be taking something else? Because remember, they're still growing. They are still growing. So with teenagers, you just really need to make sure they are eating enough because they are growing and they are doing the sports making sure they're well hydrated so they're not getting tired um, when they are training, when they're outside doing their sports or playing. You need to make sure they're staying well hydrated, eating enough so they don't fatigue and hurt themselves. Make sure they are also getting some sort of dairy on a daily basis, whether it's yogurt or milk or cheese, just because they are growing, which means their bones are growing and you want to make sure that their bones are staying as strong as possible. So. Dairy being our best source of calcium, you need to make sure they are getting enough dairy. Tony, as always, thank you for joining us. It's thank you for that expert insight and giving us these polls because we always want to mitigate an injury, but many people do suffer from one, but now they know what they need to eat to ensure they recover and get yeah. back to being active and healthy. Well, thanks for having me here, Ron. It's time for a quick commercial break. When we return, we meet a young, bright and talented Tana Grunewald, who shares her story with us. After the break, how to tackle niggling injuries. And we get into shape with our exercise routine. Don't move.